Hello there and welcome to the GCSE revision video. Here we're going to look at sine, cosine and area of triangle formulas. So, getting straight to the point, uh, the really important thing to remember when you're working with the sine, cosine or area of triangle formulas is that you label up the triangle um, correctly. Now we use capital letters to represent angles and little letters to represent sides. And it's really important that you label them with the corresponding letter opposite to each other in the angle and on the side. So if this was angle A on the bottom left, it would have to be top right for little a. Same goes for B. If B was in the bottom right, it would have to be little b over here. And if capital C was up here, it'd have to be little c down the bottom. It doesn't matter which order you uh, label these things in. And in fact, sometimes mid-question, you have to relabel um, according to use your, your correct formulas. So don't be too worried if you, if you have to change the labels around halfway through a question, as long as the capital letter is opposite the little letter. So these are the five rules that you have to remember for sine, cosine, and area of triangle rules. Well, it's not really five, actually. It's just three, but... The sine rule has two different flavours to it, or two different rearrangements to it. And the cosine rule also has two different rearrangements of the same formula. So don't think of it as five different formulas. Think of it as three different formulas where you can rearrange the sine one. You can either have it sine on the top or little a on the top. Or um, with the cosine rule, you can rearrange it to, um, to make cos a your subject if you want to, okay? So I'd use the red ones to work out angles if I had a missing angle in a question, and I'd use the blue ones if I had a missing side in a question. And then there's obviously half a, b, sine c. All right, then let's jump straight into a question then. So with these two questions, pause the video and have a go at finding the missing value labeled x. Okay, so let's get started on the first one on the left-hand side. Now, the first one here has all three left, all three sides and only working with one angle. So let's go back to the formulas. Let's start with the sine rule. The sine rule works with two of the angles and two of the sides. So, no, it's not going to be the sine rule because I have all three sides but only one angle. The cosine rule, however, has all three sides and only one angle. So it must be the cosine rule here. And I'm trying to find a missing angle, so it must be this formula on the right-hand side. So, cos x equals, well, according to the formula, I have to label this one as a, so it must therefore be this 9 up here that is little a, and it doesn't matter really which side is called b and which side is called c. So, let's get started. It's going to be 7 squared plus 5 squared minus 9 squared over 2 times 5 times 7. And then we'll do cos inverse of the answer. So let's type it into the calculator. And we get minus 0 0.1. And then cos inverse minus 0 0.1. Cos inverse minus 0 0.1. 95.7. And does it make sense according to the diagram? Yeah, it does make sense according to the diagram. With the second question, we have two angles in play and two sides in play, and we're missing a side. So, going back to the formulas, it's the sine rule that has two sides and two angles, the cosine rule that has three sides and one angle, so this question here must be a sine rule question. This side here is little a, which must correspond to the opposite angle over here, and this angle is b here, which must correspond to the opposite side of b. So I'm working out a missing side, and whatever I'm missing in the sine rule, I like to put that on the top. So it's going to be x over sine 29 equals 6 over sine 72. Then what I'll do is I'll times both sides by sine 29. So it's going to be x equals 6 over sine 72 times sine 29, and now I'll go ahead and type all of that into the calculator in one go. So sine uh, 72 on the bottom, I'll make sure I close my brackets here, and then times sine 29, which gives 3.05, 3.06 when rounding to three significant figures. So whatever the units is there, that's x. All right then, pause the video and have a go at these next two. All 
All right then, so in the first question here, I've got two angles and I've got two sides. So it must mean I'm using the sine rule. But I'm missing the angle here, so I'm going to put that on top. So it's going to be sine x over, and then remember the, you pair up oppositely. So it's sine x over 6 equals sine 75 over 9. So I'll now times x onto the other side. So times by 6 onto the other side, so it's... 6 sine 75, I'll multiply it onto the top of the other fraction. So type that into the calculator, 6 sine 75, close bracket over 9, and that gives me 0.64395, and then I'll do sine inverse of the answer, sine inverse answer, and that gives me 40.08. 40.08, 40.1 we'll call it, degrees. So it's sine minus 1 function that I needed to use from here to here to get rid of the sine that's next to the x. Okay, and moving on to the next one. Uh, in this question here, I've got three sides in play and one angle, so that must mean I'm using the cosine rule. So I need a missing side to calculate. So if this is my angle A, remember in the cosine rule, you only have one angle and that you must call that A. And it's this side over here that's a, little a. And then this side here is B, and this side here is C. So the formula we're going to use is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. So typing them in, x squared equals 8 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 8 times 6 times cos of 68. So I'll type that all into my calculator on the right hand side. 8 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 8 times 6 times cos 68. And I get 64. Dot, 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 dot but then I need to square root it, so I'll do square root answer button. Whoops, ah, I did cube root then. So square root answer button, and you get eight, basically eight. Lovely, there we are, that's the answer to that question. All right then, a little bit more tricky one here. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so in this question here, we have two angles in play and two sides in play. And the 18 clearly matches up with the 80, but really the x here should match up with this side over here. And we have no length on that side there. So how are we going to do this question instead? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to work out this angle here instead, matching up with the 7. And then I can just do angles in a triangle add up to 180, to work out what is left over for x. So let's work out y first. So it's going to be sine y over 7 equals sine 80 divided by 18. So times by 7 onto the other side, it's going to be sine y equals 7 lots of sine 80 over 18. So let's type that into the calculator. 7 times sine 80 over 18 gives us 0.383 basically. And then I need to do sine inverse of the answer. So sine inverse answer, 22.5 degrees. So I now know that this angle here is 22.5 degrees. So now I need to do 180. Take away the other two angles, 22.5 and take away 80. So 100 take away 22.5 gives me 77.5 degrees, and there we are. So there we are, that's the answer to that question there. So sometimes you can't go straight for the angle you're looking for, you need to go for a different angle and then use 180 degrees in a triangle. All right then, a little bit more tricky question this one. X is an obtuse angle, find the value of X. Okay, so let's get started in this question here. So x is an obtuse angle. So what does that mean? Well, remember we have three different types of angle. We have an acute angle between 0 to 90. We have an um, obtuse angle 
that goes in the middle, and the obtuse angle is between 90 to 180 degrees. Then we have a reflex angle that's between 180 to 360. Now, an obtuse angle is between 90 to 180, so we need to remember that when we're in this question. Now, let's just jump into using the sine rule on it. We've got two angles, we've got two sides, it's the sine rule. We're missing an angle here, so it needs to be on the top of our formula. So it's sine x over the opposite side, 15, equals sine 26 over 8. So, times the 15 onto the other side, and we're going to get 15 sine 26 over 8. So let's type that into the calculator fraction button, 15 sine 26 over 8, and that gives us 0 0.82. And then we need to do sine inverse of the answer. So sine inverse answer equals 55. Okay, there we are, the answer is 55. Hold on, 55 is not an obtuse angle, 55 is an acute angle. So, we need to do a little bit more here, the answer is not 55. Now remember, what we were working out here is um, sine x equals 0.82. Well, there's a different value for x that could also give us 0.82 when we put it into sine. And the way we can work it out is by using the sine graph. So remember, this is the sine graph here. It goes from 0, it goes back in at 180 and up at 360. And what we're effectively saying here is we want to know the angle that gives us 0.82 as the output. So 1 is the highest, remember, so I've drawn it quite high up. So the first angle that the calculator has given me is the 55 degree angle. But if I look across a little bit, I know that it could be also whatever this angle here is. So what I have to do is I have to think about the symmetry of the graph. If, I, if the distance from here to here is 55 degrees, then the distance from here to here must also be 55 degrees. So my answer here is going to be 180 take away 55 degrees. So 180 minus answer gives us 125 degrees as the actual answer in this question. So it very rarely happens. I've only seen it appear once in the last kind of five or six years of GCSE questions. So very rarely does it happen. But sometimes when you're using the sine rule and you're told that your angle is an obtuse angle, you have to do 180 minus your first answer to get the second answer that will give you 0.82. Try it in your calculator. Try typing in sine 125 and you will get 0.82 when you round to two decimal places. So 125 is our answer in this question. All right then, we're gonna move on to the past paper questions now. So it will start easy, then it will go to medium, then it will go to hard. So if you're feeling like the easy ones are going okay, please do feel free to jump to the medium, do a few of those, jump to the hard, do lots of those to make sure you're really good at the hard stuff. Uh, but we're just gonna go through question by question now through past paper questions, uh, just getting lots of practice in. So each question will be pause the video, have a go. So we'll start at that, pause the video, and have a go at this question. Okay, so this question here has one angle and three sides, so it's the cosine rule. And the formula I'm going to use here is cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. Wherever I'm working out with the cosine rule, I want it at the front. So I have to label this as angle A, so this one over here has to be labeled little a. And then this one is B and this one is C, doesn't really matter which way around. So it's going to be cos x equals 9 squared plus 13 squared minus 7 squared over 2 times 9 times 13. So grab the calculator uh, fraction button, 9 squared plus 13 squared plus minus 7 squared over 2 times 7 times, uh, 2 times 9 times 13. Make sure you get those numbers right. That will give you uh, 0.859, basically. 
And then the answer to the question is cos inverse of the answer. Cos inverse answer, not point, so 30.8. 30.8. And always check with these questions how much degree of accuracy they want it to. One decimal place, yeah, that's one decimal place. And I'm using my answer value from one line to the next. All right, then moving on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so in this question here, I'm trying to work out the area of the triangle ABC. Now remember the formula for the area of a triangle, we haven't done it yet, is half AB sine C, where I need C to be an angle and then I need either side of that angle. So really, if I had this angle here, that would be the best thing possible. Uh, so just try and work it out. Well, I've got 57 and 48 matching up here, but 36 would match up with this angle down here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to work out y, and then I'll work out x afterwards, then I'll work out the area of the triangle. So let's use the sine rule to work out y. So it's sine y over 36 equals sine 48 over 57. Remember, when I'm using the sine rule, I like to have the letter I don't know on the top row. Times by 36 onto the other side, so it would be 36 times sine 48 over 57. When I put 36 next to the sine, that means multiply. So 36 sine 48 over 57 that's equal to 0.469 dot dot dot. Then I'll do sine inverse of this value. Sine inverse answer. And that gives 28 degrees, basically. So I've got this angle here is 28 degrees. Now I need to work out this angle x up here. So that's going to be 180 minus 28 minus 48. So 180 minus answer minus 48 gives us 104 degrees. So this angle up here is 104 degrees. And now that I have one side, its angle, and another side, I can now do half AB sine C. So the area of the triangle is equal to half times A times B times sine C. So I'm now going to label this angle here as C this is little a and this is little b. So it's going to be a half times little a, which is 57, times b, which is 36, times sine of uh, 104. In fact, that's still stored as the answer value in my calculator, so I'll use that. Uh, times 36 times sine answer equals 995 to three significant figures, and it's meters squared as the units. Lovely, there we are, that's the answer to that question. A little bit tricky, that one. All right, let's move on to the next question here. Pause the video and find out the length of B to C. Okay, so in this question, I need to work out the length B to C. So I'll put a little letter along there. Let's call it X. So in this question, I'm working with three sides and one angle, so it must be the cosine rule. And I'm trying to work out this length here, so I'll put that at the front of the cosine rule. So B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Let's label it up. The angle has to be called a, it's not because that corner is A, it's because in the formula the only angle is called capital A. So this side here has to be called B, and these two sides can be labelled B and C uh, separately. So this side over here has to be called A, because it has to be opposite the angle A. So that's going to be x squared equals uh, 4.8 squared plus 6.4 squared minus 2 times 4.8 times 6.4 times by cos of 123. 
So let's work out what x squared first is, and then we can square root it afterwards. 2 times 4.8 times 6.4 times cos 123. And that gives us 97.46. So therefore, x is equal to the square root of this, which is 9.87. To three significant figures, yet yeah, 9.87. I've used the answer value all the way along there. So 9.87 is the answer, and it's centimetres. Make sure you put units on it. All right, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, let's get started on this question here. It's very similar to the one, one, no, two questions ago. So we want to really have this angle here because then I can use half AB sine C. Because you always have to use half AB sine C with the angle that's in the middle and two sides that are coming off the half AB sine C, out of the C angle. Uh, but um, when I look at using the sine rule to work out this side here, this angle here, I should really know this side here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find that angle and then do 180 degrees minus it to work out C. So let's work out X first. Using the sine rule, it's going to be sine X over, and that's going to be opposite 8.5. Remember, with sine rule, you're working with opposite sides and angles always. Uh, equals sine 47 over 13.8. So times by 8.5 onto the other side. So it's going to be 8.5 times sine 47 over 13.8. Now grab the calculator. Whoops. Now grab the calculator. So 8.5 times sine 47, close bracket, divide by 13.8, 0 0.45, dot, dot, dot. Now I need to do sine inverse of the answer value. So sine inverse answer button, 26.77. I'll keep that as my answer value. Now that's that's value x, 26.77. Now I need to work out this angle here. So 180 minus 47 minus 26.77. So that's 180 minus answer value minus 47, 106.226 dot, 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 dot. So this angle here is now 106.226. Now the next thing I need to do now is finally work out the area of this triangle. So now I can use half times A. We'll call A this side here. That's 13.8 times 8.5 times sine of answer value because I've still got 106 stored as my answer in the calculator. So let's do that then. 0 0.5 times 13.8 times 8.5 times sine answer value. That gives us 56.3. That would be centimetres squared. And just check the degree of accuracy. Three significant figures. One, two, three. Done. All right, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and work this one out. Okay, well, compared to the previous questions, this one's a doddle, really. We can see here we've got two angles and two sides in this question, and we've clearly got opposite angles and sides matching up. So it's the sine rule. I'm missing a side, so I'd like to put that on the top. So it's x over sine 62 equals 14.6 over sine 105. So I'll multiply the sine 62 onto the other side, sine 105. Remember, angles always go inside a sine for sine rule. So let's type that all into the calculator all in one go. 14.6 over sine 105, whoops, 105, and then on the side, multiply by sine 62, and you get an answer of 
13.3. And that's to one decimal place, centimetres, there we go. Alright then, let's move on to the next question, pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so let's get started on this question. The aim of this question really is to work out the area of OABC. OABC, so it's the area of the whole thing. So let's divide this up into two separate regions. Let's call this region X and this region Y. And let's jump straight into working out the area of X. And in area X, I can just straight away use half AB sine C. 0 0.5 times 12 times 16 times sine 60 equals, so 0 0.5 times um, 12 times 16 times sine 60 equals 48 root 3. It's telling me on the calculator, but in my answers to three significant figures, so I'll probably eventually need it as a decimal. 83.138 dot dot dot. So that's area X sorted. Now I need to work on area Y. Now what I'd probably need for area Y is this radius value. It's a sector area, and I'd probably need to know this value for the radius. Now I can work out this radius value by using a cosine rule on the triangle. So let's work out, start substituting in the numbers. So it's R squared equals 12 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 12 times 16 times by cos of 60. So let's type that into the calculator. It's 12 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 12 times 16 cos 60. And we get an answer there of 208. So square root the answer, square root 208 and 4 root 13. Well, yeah, as a third, but I want it as a decimal, 14.42. Um, Da, da, da. Now that I've got the radius value, now I can work out the area of the sector. And remember that sector areas are calculated by the formula 38 over 360. That's how much of the circle I want. It's 300, so 360 in a circle, but I only want 38 degrees of that circle. So 38 over 360 multiplied by the area of the circle, pi r squared. So it's pi times the radius squared. Now I know what the radius squared is, I can just substitute that straight in, 208. So let's type that all into the calculator then, 38 over 360 times by pi, whoops, times by pi, uh, whoops, times pi times 208 and that gives me ooh, not a very nice number. Let's just write it as 68.975 dot dot dot. And now the total answer is going to be 83.138 plus 68.975. Now notice my answer only needs to be to three significant figures, but my working out values are more than three significant values. That's because I don't know whether the fourth significant value is going to round the third one up or keep it the same. So I always work to a couple extra than I actually need. So 83.138 plus 68.975. And that's going to be 152.1. So I'm just going to write 152 as my answer to this question. All right, then let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, let's get started. So uh, it's a quadrilateral and we're working with triangles here. Now what we can do in this question, and the easiest way of doing it is to just split this triangle in half like that. We'll work out the area of the bottom. It will be the same as the area on the top, so I'll just double it afterwards. So the area is going to equal two times and then the area of the triangle, half A, which is three, times B, which is eight, 
times sine c, sine 110. So uh, probably the 2 and the half can cancel out. So it's going to be 3 times 8 times sine 110. And that gives us 22.55. So that's going to be 22.6 centimetres squared to three significant figures. All right, then let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, so I'm working out the area of this triangle. I've got two of the sides, so ideally I would have this angle here, the Q angle, um, or I'd call it C because I want half AB sine C, because to use half AB sine C, I need two sides and then the angle that's in between those two sides. And if I label this one A and this one B, then this side here has to be labeled C, and therefore I need the capital C that's in the middle of A and C, A and B. So you can't just use half AB sine C by spotting you've got two sides and one angle, so therefore just use half AB sine C. It has to be the angle that's in between the two, um, the two side lengths that you have. So I need this angle here. Uh, so ideally I'd have an opposite side to work it out, but I don't. So what I'll have to do in this question is I'll have to work out this bottom angle here first using opposite sides and angles, sine rule, then I'll do 180 minus to get this angle up here. So I'm working with a sine rule first. Sine x equal, so over, the opposite side to that is 12.7, equals uh, another sine on the top, uh, 78, over 18.5. So times the 12.7 onto the other side, so sine x equals sine 78 times 18.5 times by 12.7. Uh, so I've multiplied the 12.7 onto the other side. And then we'll calculate this, so sine 78 divided by 18.5 and then times by 12.7, so 0 0.67. And then I'll do sine inverse and work out this value. Sine inverse, I'll use the answer button in my calculator to get a more accurate answer. 42.18 is the degree down here. 42.18. So that must mean the angle up here, 118 minus 42.1. I've still got that as my answer value. Take away 78 as well is 59.8. Now I can use that to work out the area of the triangle. So it's area equals half times 12.7 times 18.5 times sine 59.8. And I've still got that stored as the answer value in my calculator, so I'm going to get a super accurate answer here. 0.5 times 12.7 times 18.5 times sine answer value equals... 101.5, so that would be 102 to three significant figures. And it's centimeters squared because it's an area. All right, there we are. Let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, work out the area of the triangle. Well, in this question, I really nicely have the two sides and then the angle in the middle, which means I can use half AB sine C. So in this question here, area equals 0 0.5, that's the half part, times 7 times 10 times sine 105. And this is going to equal 0 0.5 times 7 times 10 times sine 105. Oh, it gives me a horrible answer here. Let's press the S to D mode, and I get 33.8 degrees, sorry, not degrees, 33.8 centimetres squared. So that's to three significant figures. And then work out the size of the angle BAC. Now you work that out by doing B to A to C. So that's this angle over here. 
Uh, so how am I going to do this? Well, uh, so I've got an opposite side and an angle here. Um, I might have an opposite side and angle there. No, I might have an opposite side and angle here. No. Uh, what I could do is I could work out this side length over here, and then I've got an opposite side and angle here. So that's what I'll do then. I'll use, well, I have to use, um, if this is my little a side down here, I have to call this angle up here capital A. It doesn't matter what the label is uh, on the sides, um, that's just for the question. I can label the angle what I want to label the angle as. So I'm looking to work out this angle C down here. Um, so that, uh, but first I have to work out this side down here. So it's going to be a bit of cosine rule. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. And uh, typing that in, so B is going to be, we'll label it as 7 today, and C will be 10 minus 2 times 7 times 10 times cos 105. So 7 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 7 times 10 times cos 105. That gives me 185 dot dot dot. So therefore A is going to equal the square root of this, which is 13.6. So I now know that this side is 13.6. And when you're in an exam, do draw on the diagram. You are allowed. So that side's 13.6 now. And now I can do the sine rule. So that's going to be sine, I'll call it capital C, sine C over uh, 10, because that's the opposite side to it. And then I'm working with this opposite side and angle here. So that's equal to sine 105. And this is going to be over, well, I've got 13.6 stored as my answer value currently, so I'll use that. So it's going to be um, sine C equals, well, sine 105 divided by answer. And then we'll times that by 10. So that's going to be 0 0.7097 dot dot dot. So therefore the answer to C is going to be sine inverse of this, which is 45.2. And I've always used the answer value from one part of the question to the next part, so I know that is exactly correct to one decimal place. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, this seems like a pretty easy question for this place in the video. Uh, it's three sides, one angle, so it's the cosine rule, and we want to find the angle, so therefore it's going to be cos A, or we could probably write here cos X, equals this one over here is, this. so this angle has to be capital A, this side here has to be little a, and then B and C, doesn't matter which way around B and C are, so it's going to be 4 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times... Uh, so minus a squared, which is 8 squared, um, over 2bc, 2 times 4 times 6. So cos x is going to equal, type it into your calculator now, 4 squared plus 6 squared minus 8 squared over 2 times 4 times 6. That's minus 0 0.25. And then we do cos inverse answer. inverse answer and we get 104.47 whoops 104.47 so 5 to 1 decimal place so not too bad that one probably should have put it earlier in the video but uh, it's good to see another basic one once you've done a few hard ones okay next question pause the video and have a get this one Okay, so in this question here, we want to calculate the area of triangle JKL. Well, in this case, I can just go straight to the area of a triangle formula because my two sides have an angle in between them, so I can use half AB sine C. This side is A, this side is B, and this angle here is C, so half AB sine C. So the area, I'm answering part A here, is equal to 1 half times 10.5 
times 17.6 times sine 109. So we have the calculator 0 0.5 times 10.5 times 17.6 times sine 109. And that gives us 87.4 to three significant figures. And that would be centimetres squared. Let's move on to the next part of the question. Calculate the length of KL. Well, in that case, now I need to use the cosine rule and I need to relabel these sides here. So the label is going to be different in this new question. So for the cosine rule, I need the angle to be capital A and then these two sides to be B and C. And this length over here is going to be little a. So A squared equals, and then B squared, 10.5 squared, plus C squared, that's 17.6, minus 2 times 10.5 times 17.6 times by cos of 109. So I'll work out a squared first, 10.5 squared plus 17.6 squared. Whoops, I forgot to put the square on that. Uh, minus 2 times 10.5 times 17.6 times cos 109. And that gives us an answer of 540.3 dot dot dot. And then we'll square root the answer. So we'll get 23.2 to three significant figures. OK, there we are. That's the answer to this question. All right, moving on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so we have this triangle here, calculate the length of AB, so that's this side from here to here. So we've got two angles in play here, and we've got two sides in play, so it must be the sine rule. I've got an opposite side and angle here, and the opposite angle to this side is 28. So I can just use the sine rule straight away. I'm trying to work out the length of this line, so I'll write this as x. So it's going to be x over sine of that angle, sine 28. Remember the fractions come in pairs. So if that's, if that's my x on the top of the fraction, it needs to be sine of the opposite angle on the bottom fraction, and then we'll do it for another fraction as well. 10.2 over sine 134. So times the sine 28 onto the other side, times sine 28, and then grab your calculator and type it all in in one go. 10.2 divided by sine 134, close brackets, and then on the side, multiply by sine 28, and we get 6.66. .66. Ooh, spooky. 6.66 .66, centimetres as the answer to that question. Right then, moving on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, we've already seen one very similar to this. What we can do with kites is you can split them in half right down the center, work out the area of this triangle. It's going to be perfectly symmetric with this triangle, so it's just going to be two lots of these triangles. So the area is going to be two lots of the area of this triangle. And with this triangle, we can just straight away use half a b sine c. The reason we can do that is because we've got two angle, two sides and the angle in between. This side is A, this side is B, and this angle here is capital C, so we can do half AB sine C. So it's going to be 2 times half times 6.4 times 9.7 times sine 110. So you can cancel out the 2 and the half there, and now it's just going to be 6.4 times 9.7 times sine 110. And that gives us 58.3, and that's uh, centimetres squared. Right, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Right then, quite a tricky question this one, because it doesn't give us a diagram to work with. So we'll draw our own little triangle. 
don't know how accurate that's going to be. I know that from R to P, that's probably going to be quite a long side. So I'll put that as the longest side, 8.7. And I'll put the Q up here. Um, P to Q is 5.2. And P R Q, that's the angle formed by going from P to R to Q, is 32. And the question here is to, uh, assuming P Q R is an acute angle, calculate the area of the triangle RPQ. Okay, so we need half AB sine C, um, but we in between our two angle, two sides, we don't have that angle. So ideally, we would have this angle here in order to use half AB sine C. We have 5.2 matching up with the 32, um, but the 8.7 won't match up with this X here. It would match up with this angle up here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to work out this angle at the top here. Then we'll do 180 degrees in a triangle to work out x, and then we'll do half AB sine C with the 5.2x and the 8.7. So we're working out y first here. So it's going to be y sine y, because we always do sine of angles, sine y over 8.7 equals sine 32 over 5.2. So we're using the sine rule here, we're working with opposite angles and sides. 5.2 will match up with the 32, that's why it's got its own fraction. And 8.7 will match up with the y, that's why it's got its own fraction. I'll times by 8.7 onto the other side now. So sine 32 over 5.2, and then on the side times by 8.7. And I'll put that all in the calculator all in one go, so sine... 32, close brackets, over 5.2 times on the side, 8.7. And I get an answer of 0.88656. Uh, no, 6.8866. 6. There we are. Okay, and now we need to do sine inverse of answer button. So sine inverse answer value, and that gives us 62.45, 62.45. Okay, so there we are. So that angle there is 62.45, but we want to work out x. So x is now going to be the angle left over from 180 degrees in a triangle. So 180 minus 32 minus 62.45. Or I can use answer button there, and that will give me 85.55. So quite a big angle there. It doesn't look like it on the diagram, because I only drew a rough diagram just to put these values on, but that's going to be a big angle. Okay, the next thing we now need to do is we need to now work out the area. We're almost at the answer for this question, so now we have this angle here, 85. Okay, so let's work out the area now then. So it's going to be a half AB sine C. So this is A, this is B, this is uh, C for the angle. So half times 8.7 times 5.2 times by sine of, now use answer button. That will bring in this 85.55 from above. And your final answer is going to be 25, sorry, 22.6 degrees, so not degrees, centimetres squared. Uh, as the answer to that question. And hopefully you've used the answer button as you've gone through the question there to give yourself the most accurate answer possible. It is 22.6. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so let's get started on this question then. So the area of the triangle ADC is 56. Work out the length from A to B. Wow, well, that's quite a difficult question. Okay, so let's get started. I'll work up here to start with, then I'll move down here afterwards. So we've got the area of this triangle, and that's going to be half AB sine C. So this will be A. This unknown side here will be B, and then this angle here will be C. So it's going to be half times A, which is 11 times this side here that we don't know, that we'll call that B, and then we'll times it by sine 105. And that's going to equal 56. 
Okay, so we now need to do a bit of rearranging here. We need to double both sides first to get rid of the half. So 11b times sine 105 will equal 112. Let's just check that. Yeah, 112. Then we need to divide by 11. So b uh, times sine 105. We'll divide by the sine 105 right at the end. So 112 divided by 11, well, gives us about 10.182. And then divide by its sine 105, and we get 10.5. So the side length for B is 10.5. I'm going to write a few decimal places here, just in case it ever drops out of my answer value. Okay, so I've stored a quite a long decimal there, just in case I need to come back to it. But that side length here now is about 10.5-ish. Okay, what can I do next then? What I could probably do next, so I could probably work out the length of this side here using the cosine rule. So I've got this 10.5 here, the sine, uh, so the angle here, and the side length here. But this is going to need to be relabeled because when you're using the cosine rule, your angle is always capital A, and then we'll call this one B and this one C, this length here C. So we're working out this length here, that's referred to as A squared in the cosine formula. A squared equals 11 squared plus, I'm going to use the answer value that I had from before, answer squared, that's the B value, uh, minus 2 times um, 11 times answer value times by cos of 105. So therefore a squared is going to be 11 squared um, plus answer squared minus 2 times 11 times answer times cos 105 and we get 292 dot 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 square root answer value and we get 17.1 17.09190364. So 17.1 basically along that line. And then the final thing to do is work out this length from A to B. And I can spot here that if I now look at the top triangle, I've now got a pair of opposite sides and angle that I can use to work out the length from A to B. I'll refer to that as X. So I'll now do x is the one I want to find out, so I'll put that on the top of a fraction, and then it's going to be sine 48 on the bottom. And then it's going to be equal to 17.1, or in fact I'll use answer value on the top, over, over sine 118. So I'll now times by sine 48 onto the other side. And I'll type this into my calculator all in one go. So fraction button first, answer divided by sine 118 times sine 48. And that gives me 14.4, 14.4 to one decimal place. And hopefully you've used the answer button throughout the question. So you've got that question perfectly correct. It's quite a difficult question, that one. Let's do three different types of calculations. A bit of area first, then cosine rule then sign rule. All right then, so moving on to this question here, pause the video and have a get this one. All right then, let's get started on this question here. We need to work out the length of this side here, A to D, but we probably haven't got enough information on the top triangle yet. We probably need a bit more information to connect it to the bottom triangle. Well, the first thing I could do is I could probably work out this angle down here pretty easily. That won't take uh, too long to do, 180 minus these two. I don't think I need it. I think the key thing for moving on in this question here is to work out the length of the line from B to D. And I can work that out by using the sine rule. I can match up the opposite angle inside here and the opposite angle inside here. So I'll call this um, line X. So it's going to be x over sine 34 will equal 12.5 over sine 109. 
times both sides by sine 34. So type that into your calculator all in one go, 12.5 on the top, sine 109, and then on the side times by sine 34, 7.39 as the answer to that length. Obviously I'm not going to just write down sine, so 7.39, I'm going to use the answer value in the next calculation. Okay, just reframe, I'm looking for the length from A to D, so I'm now looking for this length here. And I reckon if I now use the cosine rule, I've got uh, two sides and an angle in between, I can work out this side over here. So that's side A, this is angle capital A and B and C respectively. So now let's use the cosine rule. So A squared equals B squared 11.4 squared plus C squared 7.39 squared, but I'll use the answer value there, minus 2 times 11.4 times 7.39 times by cos of 86. So let's get started. 11.4 squared plus answer squared minus 2 times 11.4 times answer times cos 86. And if you do that, you get 172.9 dot dot dot. So then square root this answer, and you get 13.1 to three significant figures, centimetres. Okay, there we are. That's the answer to this question. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, so the trick to this question here is to divide it diagonally like this, and in fact what you'll get when you divide it diagonally, any, par I mean, any parallelogram when you divide it diagonally will have two equal or equivalent um, area uh, triangles, uh, one on the top, one on the bottom. So it's now just going to be a case of two times the area of a triangle, and we've got a perfect setup for an area of a triangle formula here. We've got two sides and an angle in between, so it's going to be two lots of a half, times 6.7 times 8.9 times by sine 74. This is the area. So let's now calculate. I can probably cancel out the two and the half. So it's now just 6.7 times 8.9 times sine of 74. That gives me an answer of 57.3 centimeters squared. And there we are. Pretty easy question, really, once you've got the trick. OK, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. All right, then let's get started. So we're given the extra bit of information here that the line from L to N is equal to 13.3. So usually in the last question, what we saw is we had two sides and an angle in between, and then we worked out one triangle, double it, to get the other triangle. So what we need in this question is to work out this angle. And the way we're going to do that is by using the cosine rule by these labels. So it's going to be cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2 times B times C. OK, so grab your calculator and have it as one fraction. 7.5 squared plus 14.6 squared minus 13.3 squared, uh, all divided by 2 times 7.5 times 14.6. And that gives my answer for cos A equal to 0 0.422, basically. And then to work out the actual angle, I'm going to do cos inverse of the answer value, and that's going to give me 65, pretty, pretty accurately 65 degrees. So 65 degrees here. 
And now I can do that whole half AB sine C, but double it for the second triangle. So the area is equal to two lots of half times A. Now we have to relabel all these uh, things now. It doesn't matter if you relabel. This will now be A, this will now be B, this will now be C here. So it's half times A, which is 7.5, times B, which is 14.6, times by its sine C, which is 65, or I'll use answer value there. The 2 and the half can cancel each other out. So 7.5 times 14.6 times by sine of answer value gives us 99.2 uh, centimetres squared. Okay, there we are. That's the answer to this question. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so in this question here, we need to break this pentagon down into two, so into three separate triangles. And we need to work out the area of each of these different sections. So we can see here that the section on the left and the section on the right are exactly the same section. So I can just double one section to get the other section. And it'd be pretty easy to work this section out. All I need to do here is, um, is just do two lots of half AB sine C, and it's perfectly set up for a half AB sine C, two sides and the angle in between. So half times eight times 12 times by sine 105. The two and the half can cancel each other out. So eight times 12 times sine 105, that will give us 92.7 I'll write, I'll write it down as a big long decimal just in case I have to lose it from my calculator. 92.7288 uh, So that's this area here and this area here added together. All that's left for me to do is now work out this area here. Okay, so I think what would be easiest to do, if I work out the length of these lines... They're going to be the same on each side, and now I've got an isosceles triangle, and then I can do a bit of Pythagoras and break it down in half, and then I can do base times height divided by 2. So let's work out the length of this line here. It's going to be A, B, C, capital A. So A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B, that's um, 12 times C, times cos 105. So let's work that out. 12 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 12 times 8 times cos of 105. And there I get 257.6 dot 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 and then square root it. Square root answer. And I get 16.5. So 16.05. So 16.05, 16.05. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this shape down the center in half. Obviously, if I'm working with the left-hand triangle here, this side of the triangle is going to be 6.5. I'm going to do a little bit of Pythagoras um, to work out a shorter side of a right-angled triangle. The reason I know this, is bit, this side is being chopped in half is because it's an isosceles triangle. So my next calculation is going to be the square root of 16.05, I'll use answer button there, squared, take away 6.5 squared. This is going to give me the height of this triangle. So square root, answer value squared, minus 6.5. The reason I'm minusing here is because I'm working out a shorter side. Pythagoras theorem, when you add, is a longer side. And I get 14.6779854 in that calculation there. And now I'm going to do base times height divided by 2. So the triangle is now going to be half times base. And I'm going to go back to the whole of base now. So I'm working out the whole triangle area now. So half times 13 times by the height, and I've just worked out the height value as the current answer value. 
this height here is 14.7 basically. So now let's do that calculation, 0 0.5 times 13 times answer value, and that gives me 95.4069.0538. So let's now work out the total, and that's going to be this number here, those are the two triangles on the left and the right, 92.7 2887932 plus the current answer value that's in the calculator, which is this one. So add 92.7287932, and we get an answer rounded to three significant figures of 188. And that would be centimeters squared. Lovely, there we are. So that was quite a tricky question. That one we need to use area of triangle formula here. We need to use cosine rule next to work out this line from here to here. And the final thing we needed to do is a bit of Pythagoras to work out the height of this isosceles triangle. And then we worked out the whole area by doing um, the area of a triangle is half base times height. You can use half base times height when you know that there's a right angle in between your base and your height. Yeah, so this is quite an interesting question where you've got one way of working out the area of a triangle, half AB sine C, and another way of working out the area of a triangle, half base times height, all inside one question. So just a reminder, you can only use half base times height when you know that your base and your height meet at a right angle. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, so we're working out the length, so we're working out the size of angle MLP, so that's from M to L to P. So we're working out this angle here. Okay, so the first thing I think we might want to do is maybe split this in half some way, or split it into two triangles, um, maybe either across that way or down this way. I think it'd probably be easier to come down this way like that. So in fact what I've done here is I've accidentally chopped the angle that I'm looking for in half, part of it's this angle here x and part of it's this angle here y. So the first thing I'm going to do in this question is I'm going to work out um, the length of this diagonal line here. I think that will probably open up the question quite a lot. So it's going to be A here, B here, C here, and uh, capital A inside this angle here. So A squared equals B squared, 4.3 squared, plus C squared, 15.6 squared, minus 2 times 4.3 times 15.6 times by cos of 72. So let's put that all into the calculator now, 4.3 squared plus 15.6 squared minus 2 times 4.3 times 15.6 times by cos 72. And that gives me an answer of 220, something, 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 and then square root this answer. And it gives me 14.8. I'll write a big long decimal for it, 14.8456. 1484. Okay, so that's the value of this line here, 14.8 basically. And now I can probably work out this y angle here. If I use the sine rule, I've got y is opposite to 4.3 and 72 is opposite to 14.8. Then I can work out this angle y here. So let's go for it, sine y over its opposite side length, 4.3, is equal to, another angle needs to go on the top, sine 72, over 14.8. And I'm going to use the answer button there, because I still have it stored. So I'm going to times 4.3 onto the other side, sine y equals sine 72 over 14.8 times by 4.3, and I'll type that all into the calculator in one go. Sine 72, whoops, sine 72 over answer value times by 
that gives me 0 0.275 and now I'm going to do sine inverse sine inverse answer 15.99 basically 16 so this is basically 16 degrees here uh, and now so I'm working out this whole angle so now I need to work out x and now I can work out x from the opposite side and angle here and the opposite side and angle here so now it's going to be sine x, another sine rule, over its opposite side, 13.7, equals, we'll do the same for sine 58, over 14.8. I'm not going to use 14.8, I'm going to use this big long decimal number here. Try to be as accurate as possible. So sine x, I'm going to multiply the 13.7 onto the other side. Sine 58 over 14.8 multiplied by 13.7 so fraction button sine 58 um, over 14.8456 and then I'll multiply that by 13.7 so that's 0.78ish, and then we'll do sine inverse. Sine inverse answer value equals 51.5, basically. 51.5. So add the two things together now. Your total angle x plus y is going to equal 16 plus 51.5. 16 plus 51.5 gives us 67.5. And there we are, that's the answer to the size of the angle MLP. So we had to break it, this quadrilateral, into two. Generally, that's a, a, a good strategy to use. And the examiners like to ask questions like this, where you have to break a quadrilateral into two, work out maybe what the middle line is, length, and then get to the other side and help it, help it use that line to help you on the other side. All right, let's move on to the next question then. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Right, then let's have a go at this question here. Pause the video and give it a go. Okay, so we're looking to find the area of BCD. So we need to know a bit more information about triangle BCD. So I suppose the first thing we could do is we could work out the length of this line here from C to D. So that's going to be cosine rule. So we'll have to label it with A and then capital A over here, B and C. So A squared equals 4.9 squared plus 3.8 squared minus 2 times 4.9 times 3.8 times cos of 80. So a squared equals, let's do it all on the calculator, 4.9 squared plus 3.8 squared minus 2 times 4.9 times 3.8 times cos uh, 80 equals 31.98. And then we need to square root the answer. So square root answer equals 5.655. 5.655. I'm going to write the full decimal just in case I need to come back to it. Okay, there we are. So about 5.7-ish. Okay, uh, we probably need to know a bit more detail than that. Uh, maybe it might be helpful to work out a few more angles so I can work out a few more sides. Uh, I'll need this angle here and I can use a straight line. So I'll work out this angle x here. So sine x over the opposite side, 4.9 equals uh, sine, let's, what am I going to work with here, sine 80 over the 5.7 side, but really it's 5.6555 dot 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 dot, so sine x equals, uh, it's going to be sine 80 over answer, fraction button, sine 80 over answer, and then it's going to be multiplied by 4.9, and then so that's 0 0.853 dot 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 and then sine inverse of it sine uh, whoops sine inverse answer equals 58.568949 that's
That leads to therefore angle Y is going to be 180 minus this because um, that's uh, angles in a straight line. So 180 minus answer value equals 121.43. So this is an angle of 121. Okay, uh, if that's an angle of 121, then I can work out this angle here because it would be whatever's left over from 180. So 180 minus, so we'll call this angle Z. Z equals 180 minus answer value, but minus the other 25 from angles in a triangle. So 180 take away answer, take away 25 equals 33. 0.568949 so about 33.6 here and now we can work out the length of maybe oh, don't know which which side would be easier probably this side here we we'll work out the length of this side here uh, by the sine rule and then we've got half a b sine c so we'll label this side here and I've kind of run out of letters here we'll call it maybe k so therefore uh, K over um, the opposite angle there is 25, so sine 25 equals the 5.7 side, but I actually know that that's 5.65538167 over uh, sine of the answer value that I've currently got in my calculator, the 33.6 value. So therefore K is going to be fraction butter 5.65538167 uh, divided by sine answer value and then on the side multiply it by sine 25 and that gives me 4.32247125 and the final, final question here is now going to work out the area so the area is going to equal half times A, uh, which we'll set as the, the current answer value, times B, which is the 5.65538167 times sine of the angle. And that angle is going to be at 121.43. Uh, and then the answer, so 0 0.5 times answer times 5.65538167 times by sine 121.43 close bracket equals 10.4 to three significant figures so 10.4 centimeters squared is what my answer is and the answer is for this question okay moving on to the next one pause the video and have a go at this question Okay, so uh, we have uh, points A and B such that it's an equilateral triangle of seven uh, centimeters. So if, an e if it's an equilateral triangle of seven centimeters, then we know that this angle here is going to be 60 degrees. In fact, all the angles inside this triangle are 60 degrees. Calculate the area of the shaded region. So I suppose what I'll work out first is the sector area of O. N Q, that's the whole thing I'm working out the area of here. That's going to be 60 divided by 360 times pi r squared. And the radius for this sector is 11. So pi times 11 squared. So that's going to be 11 squared times pi divided by 6, because that's the same as 360. So 60 over 360. That is an area of... 63.35545185 Now the next part is to work out the area of this triangle and then we'll subtract it away so area of the triangle is going to be half times a 7 times 7 times sine 60 equals 0 0.5 times 7 times 7 times sine 60 close brackets equals 21.21762239 so then the shaded area 
equals 63.3554185 minus 21.2 dot dot dot. That's my current answer value. So 63.3554185 uh, takeaway answer equals 42.1 to one decimal place centimeters squared. And there we are, that's the answer to this question. Let's move on to the next one, pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, so a bit difficult to see this one, but let's uh, give it a go anyway. So we've got A to D is 14 centimetres. We've got a circle with radius 6, so 6 here, 6 here. Uh, we've got an angle of AOD, that's 140. Uh, so that must mean this angle round here is uh, 220. And we've got an angle OAD equals 24 degrees. So I could quickly work out that one, that's 360 minus 140 take away 24. That's a quick calculation of no, it's not 360, is it? it's 180. 180 minus those two, 16 degrees. Okay, so now I need to work out the perimeter of the shape. Okay, well, let's go for this perimeter bit here first. Okay, so uh, ABC perimeter. Uh, well, that's going to be equal to 220 over 360. That's the fraction of the whole circle perimeter um, times by the perimeter of the whole circle. That's going to be um, pi times 12, pi d. The radius is 6, so the diameter is 12. So type that all into the calculator, 220 divided by 360 times by pi times by 12 equals 23.0383 dot dot dot. Okay, so that's that perimeter. Now we need the next part of the perimeter. Well, we've got a 14 along here. We don't know what this length from here to here is. So I suppose I should work out the whole length from O to D, and then I can just subtract six afterwards. So that's going to be a sine rule calculation. So we'll say that that whole length from O to D is x over sine 24 equals, uh, let's do the 14 over sine 140. And uh, let's do that all on the calculator. So 14 on the top of a fraction, sine 140 on the bottom, and then multiply that by sine 24. And that gives us an answer of 8.85778416. Uh, yeah, that's all right. And the, the final thing we'll have to do now is take away this 6 here, just to get the extra bit on the perimeter. So from C to D, it's going to be 6 minus this, so that's 2.85877416. Now the final thing we need to do now is just add the total on these perimeters together. So the perimeter is going to equal 23.0383 plus 14 along the bottom plus 2.8588. So let's grab the calculator 23.0383 plus 14 plus 2.8588 equals 39.9 centimeters uh, to three significant figures. And there we are, so a little bit of a sector, uh, sorry, uh, arc length calculation, and a little bit of sine rule to get the total length from O to D, um, and then uh, and then it's the yeah, 39.9. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so in this question, very similar kind of shape for this question, but this time we're working out the area of the shape. So let's first work out this sector area on the top. 
this angle here is going to be 210 degrees because the whole one would make 360. So therefore the sector area is going to equal 210 divided by 360 and that's going to be multiplied by the whole area of the circle and that's going to be the fraction of it, pi times 7 squared. So grab the calculator, fraction button 210 over 360 multiplied by pi multiplied by 49 and that gives us 89.797 and then the area of this triangle is going to be half AB sine C so half times A which is 7 times B well it's the whole length of this side from here to here so that's 16 times by sine 150 equals 0 0.5 times 7 times 16 times sine 150 close brackets equals 28 exactly so add 28 onto the total so the total area equals so plus 89.797 uh, equals 118 to so three significant figures Okay, there we are. Let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so in this question we're looking for the length of the line from B to C. Uh, we know that uh, the length from OA to C is a straight line. OAC is a straight line? Yeah. So we can work out that this is uh, 115 degrees here. We also know that this is a sector, so that side here must be 8 as well because it's the same as the radius. Um, and now we've got an opposite angle and side. We want to work out this side here, so we've now got another opposite angle and side. So actually this question is a pretty quick sine rule. So it's going to be A over sine 115 equals 8 over sine 35. So therefore, let's now multiply the um, sine 115 onto the other side. So we keep the 35 on the bottom, but we're multiplying by sine 115 equals, so fraction button 8 over sine 35 times sine 115, enter 12.6 centimetres to three significant figures. Okay, moving on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so in this question here, we're looking to work out the angle of, so the area of this triangle that's shaded here, A, B, T. And I'm thinking we're going to have to work out one of the angles and then two of the sides. Now, this side here is going to be a length 7. And it looks like this circle, this pentagon here, has been divided up into five different shapes, with the whole point, the whole angles around the point here being 360. So for this angle here, I'm going to calculate 360 divided by 5, which is 72. So this angle here is an angle 72. This angle here and this angle here are going to be equal because they're both uh, on an isosceles triangle and they've both got a side of 7 centimetres. All the angles must add up to 180, so it's going to be 180 minus 72 divided into two separate angles. So 180 minus 72 and then divide by 2, that makes them both 54 degrees. Okay, we need to read a little bit more of this. So TA, TA is a tangent. So what that means is that the rest of this angle here is a right angle. So 90 minus 54, that will give us 36 as this angle here. And is OBT a straight line? Yeah, OBT is a straight line. So we can now work out that this angle here is the rest of 180 minus 54, which is 126. And we can quickly work out that what we've got left over must add up to 180, um, 36, so that's 18 degrees over here. 
Okay, we need a little bit more information about the side lengths here. Um, what we need ideally is the length of this side over here. So inside this triangle OAB, I'm going to do a little cosine rule to work out the length of A. So A squared equals B squared. Whoops, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do 7 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 lots of 7 times 7 times by cos 72. So let's grab the calculator, 49 plus 49 minus 2 times 49 t times cos of 72 is 67.7, uh, but then we need to square root, so 8.228, well basically 8.229. Okay, so that's 8.229. We now need one more side. I reckon we go for this one here down the bottom. Doesn't really matter which one too much. So we'll go for this one down the bottom. We'll call that x. And we can use the sine rule on this one. So I'll compare these two angle and side and these two angle and side. So it's going to be, um, I'm working out side. So the side goes on the top, x over sine 126 equals the answer value to the previous calculation over sine of the opposite angle 18. So therefore x is going to equal, uh, it's going to be answer value over uh, sine 18 on the calculator. And then we'll multiply the sine 126 on the other side, multiply sine 126, make sure that goes on the side of the calculation and that's 21.5 uh, 4 basically. Okay, now we can work out the A of the triangle. It's half AB sine C now. So 0 0.5 times by A, we'll call that uh, 8.229 times by B, which is the X value. That's 21.544. Uh, and the 36 value times sine 36 because the 36 is the angle in between the two sides that we're working with here. So all of that goes into the calculator then, 0 0.5 times 8.229 times answer value, because 21 is still as my current answer, times by sine 36, close brackets, is uh, 52.1 centimeters squared uh, to the three significant figures. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to this question. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so it doesn't look like we're given much here. We're given uh, 10 degrees here, 59 degrees here. So I suppose for this smaller triangle here, I could work out that this angle here is what less, what's left over from 180 degrees, so take away 90, take away 59, that gives us 31. And then I suppose I could work out this angle here from what's left over from 180. 180 minus answer is 149. I'm going to write it outside because I haven't got much space. And I could probably work out what's left over inside here from 180, so 149 add 10, and then 180 minus answer value is 21. So 21 degrees there. Okay, so we've got all the angles now, and what we need to work out is the height of AB, the height of A to B, so it's already 16.5 plus something else, so we're looking to work out this something else, and we'll add it to 16.5 afterwards. Right, so I think what we'll do first then is we'll work out the length of this line from C to D first. You could probably work out from A to C as well, but I'm going to go for C to D first. So we'll call that length X. So it's going to be X over uh, sine. I'm working on the top triangle here. So this side X is actually going to be opposite the 21 degree angle. And then what have I got left? I've got 16.5 and that's opposite to the 10 degrees. Okay, so let's now type that all into the calculator. 16.5 on the top, sine 10 on the bottom, and then on the side, we're going to multiply sine 21. And that gives us 34.0520. So 
So that's the length for x. And uh, now we can work out this length here, a bit of normal trigonometry this time. So not sine, not cosine rule, just normal trigonometry. I've got uh, this side here, I'll call that the opposite side to this 59, and that's the hypotenuse. So I've got sine 59, and I'm using soccer toa here. So soccer toa for right angled triangles. Just looking at the bottom triangle here, uh, sine is equal to opposite over adjacent. I want to work out the opposite side, and I have the hypotenuse, 34.05. So what I'll do then is I'll multiply the, uh, the 34.05 onto the other side. So take answer and multiply it by sine 59, and that gives me 29.188. And that's the length of the opposite side. So for a final answer from A to B, it's going to be 29.188, then add on the 16.5, add on 16.5, 45.7 to three significant figures, centimetres. There we are. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, so we're looking to work out the area of the shaded part here, and we have a triangle, and then this part of this this part here is an arc of a whole circle, uh, so it's a sector area here. I suppose the first important thing to work out would be this angle here, uh, because otherwise we can't really get much further. So we'll look at the whole triangle here, and we'll use the inverse, uh, well, the, the cosine rule to work out an area. So it's going to be cos x equals, now remember, if this rule here, that's capital A, and this over here is going to be little a. This side here we'll call b, and this side we'll call c. So it's going to be 10.4 squared plus 18 squared minus 12.6 squared over 2 times 10.4 times 18. So that's going to give us a value of calculator 10.4 squared plus 18 squared minus 12.6 squared over 2 times 10.4 times 18 equals, a bit long of a decimal, 0.73 dot 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 and then inverse cos answer and you're going to get 43.1 basically degrees. So 43.1 is the degree here. And now we can start working out the whole triangle area and the sector area. So the triangle area first, that's going to equal half AB sine C. So a half times 10.4 times 18 times sine answer value, 14. 43.1, so 0 0.5 times 10.4 times 18 times sine answer equals 63.947 centimetres squared for the area of the whole triangle, and now the sector area is going to be 43.1, so sector, 43.1 over 360 times the whole area of this whole circle. If we were to imagine it, that's pi times r squared. The radius here is 10.4 squared. So that's going to be fraction button 43.1 divided by 360 multiplied by pi multiplied by 10.4 squared equals 40.681 centimetres squared and now the total shaded area is going to be the big triangle take away the sector so that's going to be 63.947 take away 40.681 so let's type that all out into the calculator 63.947 take away 40.681 equals, and to three significant figures, 23.3 centimetres squared. So, 20, yeah, 23.3 centimetres squared. 
Lovely, there we are. That's the answer to that question. Let's now move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this one. All right then, Wowzers, this is a is a pretty difficult question, this one. So we need to work with the area of the triangle formula. So that's going to be half times a x plus 3 times b x 2x minus 1 times sine c, sine 45, equals 6 root 2. Okay, so let's now... Um, Work out what sine 45 is. Sine 45 is going to be uh, 1 over root 2. And then what I'm going to do to both sides next is I'm going to double both sides, and that will cancel out the uh, 0.5 here. And I'm also going to multiply by the square root of 2 to get rid of this 1 divided by the square root of 2. So that's going to end up at six, uh, so x plus 6, 2x minus 1, equals, I'm going to double the 6 to a 12, and I'm also going to times by the square root of 2, so that's going to be 12 root 4, and we know we all know root 4 is 2, so that equals now 24. Okay, now I'll expand the brackets, 2x squared plus 6x minus x minus 3 equals 24. I'm now going to take away 24 from both sides. So I'm going to get 2x squared plus 5x minus 27 equals 0. And then hopefully this factorises, it's got factors of 9 and 3, or 27 and 1, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, no, I can't see that factorising. Uh, no, I can't see it. So it's quadratic formula time. So it's going to be minus 5 plus or minus the square root uh, of 5 squared, that's 25, take away 2 times 2, so 4 so it's 4, isn't it? 4ac, four 4ac, four four 4 times 2 times minus 27 over 2a, that's 2 times 2. So the first solution with the plus in there is going to be, well, minus 5 plus square root of 25 take away 4 times 2 times minus 27 over 4. And that gives us something not very nice, 2.63 to three significant figures. Or if there was a minus solution in the middle there, it would give us, well, a negative number. And it's a length of a side, so it can't really be a negative number. So it's 2.63 is the answer to this question here. It was a bit of area of a triangle first, then we had to do a bit of rearranging. We had to double both sides, and then we had to times both sides by root 2. And then we had to move, uh, expand the brackets, move things around a little bit, and then quadratic formula it. Remember, you can only use the quadratic formula when everything's on the same side, like the like everything on the left in this case. And uh, quadratic formula at 2.63 is the answer. All right, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this one. All right, so we know the area of the parallelogram is greater than 15 centimetres squared. Now, remember, the way that we did that early was we divided the parallelogram in half and then doubled the area. So, to work out the area of the parallelogram, it's going to be double of half AB sine C. So, 10 minus X times 2X minus 1 times by sine of 150. And that's going to equal, well, no, it's going to be greater than 15 centimetres squared. Okay, so the 2 and the half cancel each other out, and sine 150 is a half. So it's going to be a half from the sine 150, not from this half I've already cancelled out, from the sine 150. And it's going to be 10 minus x and 2x minus 1. What I'll do now is I'll expand the brackets. So it's going to be 20x minus 2x squared plus 
Uh, so I've already done that one, haven't I? Plus, uh, so minus 2x squared, I've already done that one as well, haven't I? Uh, minus 10 and plus x from the double negative uh, is greater than 15. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll double the other side and that will give me 20x minus 2x squared take away 10x, um, sorry, take away 10 and then plus the x that must be bigger than 30. And now let's, uh, let's move everything onto the right hand side now. So 0 I'll leave at the front. Uh, I'll add the 2x squared on the other side. I'll take away 21x because I've got 20 here and 1x here. And I'll add 10 onto the other side which is that expression there. And it's, it's basically the same as what I've got here. I just need to now reverse everything 2x squared minus 21x plus 40 is less than 0. So the pointy side is still towards the algebra and the bigger side is still towards the zeros. So that's what I mean by flip it around. Okay, there we are. That's the answer to that one. Let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this question here. Okay, so this question here is to do with the cosine rule. We have to label this angle here A, this side here little a, this side here B, this side here little c. So it's going to be A squared, that's 2 root 7 squared, equals A squared, which is, um, so B squared, A squared equals B squared, 2x minus 1 squared, plus C squared, 2x plus 1 squared, minus 2 lots of 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1 times by cos of 60. Okay, let's grab a calculator now. 2 root 7, 2 root 7 all squared gives us 28. So on the left hand side we have 28 equals, now expanding the bracket of 2x minus 1 squared is a pretty tricky one. Treat it as a double bracket and then expand it. So you're going to get 4x squared, take away 2x, take away another 2x, that's take away 4x, and then add 1. Same thing for this 2x plus 1 squared here. Treat it as 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. Expand the brackets. So that's going to be 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. And I'm going to move on to the next line for the next bit. 2 lots of uh, cos 60. Let's do that bit first. Cos 60 is a half. Oh, okay, so the half will cancel out the 2 that's at the front. So I'll cancel out that and that. And now it's going to be 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1 expanded. So when I expand that, I'm going to get 4x squared and take away 1. Now, when I expand this bracket, I'm going to have minus 4x squared and I'm going to have plus 1 uh, because I have to take away a negative value. Okay, so that's uh, what I've got there. Now let's tidy it up. So it's going to be 28 equals, I've got 4x squared, 4x squared and minus 4x squared, so that's 4x squared. I've got minus 4x and 4x, so those two will just cancel each other out. And I've got 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's, that's plus 3. So let's now take away the 3 onto the other side, so that's 25 equals 4x squared. Divide through by 4 and you've got 25 over 4 equals x squared. And the final thing I need to do now is square root. Square rooting this expression here, well when you square root a fraction you square root the top, square root the bottom and you're there. It would be plus or minus but we're working with lengths of a triangle here, so the answer here is just 5 over 2. In fact, you could have done that whole question without a calculator. As long as you remember that cos 60 is a half, there's no reason why that question needed a calculator. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go.
Okay, let's get started on this question here. If you want an extra challenge, try it without a calculator. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to work out x. So we're going to use the cosine rule here. So it's going to be, um, well, this is the angle a, that's the opposite side. So it'll be 2x minus 1 squared equals x minus 1 squared plus x plus 1 squared minus 2 lots of x minus 1, x plus 1, cos... 120. Okay, let's start expanding the brackets. So 2x minus 1 squared, treated as 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1, and expanding a double bracket. That's going to give us on the left 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 from the double negative. x minus 1 squared, so that's x minus 1, x minus 1, and treat that as expanding the brackets. So that's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 from the double negative. Same for this next expression, it's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'm going to move on to the next line for the final part. Uh, cos 120, well if you've worked that out to be minus a half, very well done. So it's minus half and minus 2 at the front. And that could cancel out to make plus 1, because you've got 2 times a half, it's just 1, and a double negative, 1 in the front, one at the back. So it's going to be plus, and then this bracket here, the x minus 1 and the x plus 1, expanded. And that will expand to x squared minus 1. So let's tidy this up now. On the left, it's going to be 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. On the right hand side, the 2x and the minus 2x will cancel. Uh, the x squared will turn into 3x squared because we've got 1 at the end. And 1 plus 1 plus minus 1 leaves us with plus 1. So let's take away the 3x on x squared onto the other side. I've got a single x squared left here. Uh, I've got minus 4x left here and I'll cancel out the 1s on both sides. So in this question let's now factorise x, x minus 4 equals 0, so therefore either x equals 0 or x minus 4 is equal to 0, so therefore x is equal to 4. Now the only way we're going to um, be able to make sure that all these side lengths are positive is if x was equal to 4. So we'll say that x is equal to 4. Now the final part of this question is to work out the area, so now this length here, if x is 4, this side is going to be 3, and this side here is going to be 5. So now I'm going to work in this section of the page here. The area is now going to be a half times 3 times 5 times, so times cos uh, 120. So therefore that's going to equal 0 0.5 times um, so it's sine, isn't it? It's sine, not cos. So it's a half times 3 times 5 times sine 120, and that gives us an answer of 15 over 4 root 3 on the calculator there. So k is the value 15 over 4. And there we are, that's the answer to this question. All right, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this question here. Okay, so let's get started now. So the area of the rectangle ABDE is S, and we want to show that S can be expressed in the form AX squared plus BX plus C. And we know that A to B is two lots of the length from B to D. Okay, so what's going to be helpful here is if I work out the length from B to D. So I'll use the cosine rule here. A squared equals uh, B squared, that's going to be X minus 3 squared plus uh, C squared, X minus 2 squared uh, minus 2 times X minus 3 x minus 2 times by cos 120. So a squared here is going to equal, now I'll treat this as expanding the brackets, x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 
x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then I'm going to take away two lots of it in a big bracket, expanding the brackets here. Well, actually, I'll do cos 120 first. When you're multiplying lots of things together, you can choose which order to multiply in. So that's minus a half. So the minus from the minus half and the minus 2 will cancel out and make a plus, And the half will cancel out with the 2 at the front. So it would just kind of disappear because cos 120 is minus a half. Expand the brackets here. It's going to be x squared minus 5x plus 6. So let's now simplify what we've got here. We've got x squared plus x squared plus another x squared. That's 3x squared. Uh, minus 6x minus 4x minus 5x. That's minus 15x. Uh, and then the final one is going to be 9 plus 4 plus 6. That's plus 19. OK, so therefore, this length of this side here is going to be the square root of that expression. 3x squared minus 15x plus 19. And we know that the length of this side is two lots of it. So that length there is going to be two lots of the square root of 3x squared minus 15x plus 19. And this length here is going to be 3x squared minus 15x plus 19, all square rooted. That's a minus in there. Right, now we need to work out the area of A, B, D, E. So the area is going to be base times height, obviously. Two lots of the base times the height. Well, you can see here the square root that I've got is exactly the same square root on both sides. So therefore, when you times the square root with the same thing inside it, you just get that thing inside it. And now let's expand the brackets. So it's going to be 6x squared minus 30x plus 38. And that's our answer. So here in this question, A is representing the number 6. B is representing the number minus 30, and C is representing the number 38. And there we are, that's the answer to this question. All right, moving on to the next one. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so let's get stuck into this question. So what can I do first? Well, I know that this line here is a straight line. Uh, we have 62, and then whatever's left over from a straight line will be the angle inside. That would be 118. And then the angle up here will be whatever's left over from inside a triangle. So 118 plus 36, and then 180 take away answer is 26. So this angle up here is 26. OK, I'm now looking to work out the distance from Q to S. And I think here I'll use uh, the sine rule. So I've got an opposite pair of side and angle and another opposite pair of side and angle. So I'll use that. So it's x over sine 118 equals 2.9 over sine 36. And then times the sine 118 onto the other side. So grab the calculator, do it all in one go. It's going to be 2.9 over sine 36 on the side multiplied by sine 118 and you get an answer of 4.36 kilometers to three significant figures. So not too bad that one, it looks a little bit complicated but uh, once you've worked out all the angles and sine rule, yeah it's fine. Okay moving on to the next question, pause the video and have a get this one. OK, let's get started then. So we have a bearing of 210. Um, the village B is east of A. So that must mean that this here is a right angle. So if we take away this right angle to get this angle inside, then that's going to be um, 210 take away 90. That's 120. And we're looking to find the bearing of B from C. So if it's from C, then we're looking to work out this angle here, 
round to be. So we've got the north line. Whenever you're working out a bearing, you've got to have a north line, and it's the north line clockwise round until you go towards B. And it's always from C, so that's why I've started drawing my stuff at C. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out this part of the angle here. Uh, and then I'll work out the inside bit later. So what I've got here is uh, two corresponding angles. And these two angles here will add up to make 180. So let's work out what the angle is behind here. It's going to be 150 because it's 210 all the way round. So it's going to be 150 round to complete the full circle. So therefore this angle x down here is going to be 30 degrees because it, it's like a U-turn angle. I think of it as a U-turn angle. So if you imagine driving your car down here, turns right, turns another sharp right, goes back, it's done a U-turn, so it's 180 degrees rotated. Uh, so it's a U-turn. Or the posh word here is corresponding angles. Okay. Now we need to work out the remainder of the bearing, which is this angle Y here. So we've got uh, 38 degrees here, we've got 6.4 degrees here. I think what I'll do first is I'll work out the length of this line here, and then I'll do sine rule to work out uh, the remainder of the angle for y, and then I'll add 30 degrees and y together to get my total answer. So cosine rule first, this is side little a, so a squared equals 3.8 squared plus 6.4 squared minus 2 times 3.8 times 6.4 times by cos of 120. So type that all into the calculator then, 3.8 squared plus 6.4 squared minus 2 times 3.8 times 6.4 times cos 120. And we get an answer there of 79.79. .79. And then when we square root that, we get 8.9286 dot dot dot. So that's the length of this line here, 8.9. And now we're going to use the sine rule. So we're going to use the sine rule on these two opposite sides and angles and these two opposite sides and angles. So it's going to be sine y over the opposite side of 6.4 equals sine 120 over the answer value that I've just worked out. So therefore, sine y, I'll multiply the 6.4 onto the other side, sine 120, sine 120 over uh, answer value, and then multiply that by 6.4 on the side, 0.62, and then I'll work out the angle for y, sine inverse answer, 38.37. Okay, and the final thing to do here will be to work out the bearing of B from C. So the bearing in this case is going to be 30 degrees plus 38.37, and that gives us 68.37. And uh, give your answer to the correct nearest degree, that's 68, but generally when you do bearings, it's 068 degrees. Okay, so there we are, that's the answer to this question. OK, let's move on to the next one. Pause the video and have a go at this question here. OK, let's start getting ourselves involved with the angles here. So once again, I've got another U-turn angle, this uh, from north to B to A to N. Um, that's a U-turn or corresponding angles and, and these angles here will add together to make 180. So I need to do 180 minus 37 and that will give me 143 on that angle there. I can now work out the angle down below because this will now be a full turn. So that's going to be 360 minus 143 minus 150 which gives us 67. OK, what could we do now? What's the actual thing we're looking for here? Find the bearing of Cholton from Acton. So it's from Acton. So that's where we're going from. And we're going towards Charlton. Now, we've already got part of the bearing, 37. We just need now this extra component there. 
So it's very similar to the last question. What we'll do is we'll work out this side over here, and then we'll use the sine rule with the 9 kilometers to work out uh, the angle down here. So it's cosine rule first to work out the side, the distance from Acton to Charlton. So a squared equals 8 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 8 times 9 times cos 67. So type that all into the calculator, 8 squared plus 9 squared plus 2 times 8 times 9 times cos 67. And that's 201 point something something something. And then square root the answer. Oh wait, hold on, I did an accidental plus there. Hold on, let's go back, let's go back. Minus, it's not 201, it is 88.7. not degrees, um, and then we square root that answer and we get 9.42 to three significant figures. Let's just write down the full thing. 9.41991069868, so 695. And now we're going to use the sine rule, so now we know that this side over here is 9.4 and we know we want to work out this angle x here we'll use that side there. So we've got pairs of opposite sides and angles. So it's going to be sine x over 9 equals sine 67 over 9.4 is answer value. We can use that answer value from before. So multiplying the 9 up onto the other side, let's type it all in. So it's going to be sine 67 over answer value and then multiply on the side 9 and that's going to be 0 0.879 dot 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 and then we need to work out what x is, so sine inverse of it and we get 61.5786 dot 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 so final answer, the bearing of, of uh, Cholton from Acton is going to be 37 degrees plus 61.57 and working out your answer to one decimal place, so I'll put a few extra in here, plus 37 equals 98.6 degrees, and that definitely does make sense. It definitely looks right, and it's definitely a little bit more than a right angle, so that I think that's a, that's a good answer. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Pause the video, have a go at this one. OK, so in this question here, we have the area of triangle B is three times the area of triangle A. So that means you need to do three times A and you'll get B because B is three times bigger than A. So what's the area of B? Well, that would be an easy one to work out. It's base times height divided by two because it's a right angled triangle. So it's going to be a half of A plus one, B plus two. And what I'll do is I'll expand the brackets, but not with the half. I'll leave the half at the front. AB plus B plus 2A plus 2. Now, it might be more helpful to use this one. Or it might be more helpful to use this one. I'm not sure yet, but um, we'll see what we can do later. Moving on to triangle A now, working out the area of this one. That's going to be half AB sine C. So it's going to be half AB sine 150. Uh, sine 150 is the same as sine 30. Let's just check it on the calculator. Yeah, that's same as a half. So we've got times another half here. So this is actually one quarter AB. Okay, so now we need to work out the... Um, we now need to express A in terms of B. So what that means is we need a final equation of A equals something to do with B. So we know that 3 times the area A, that's a quarter AB, equals the area B. And that's a half AB plus B plus 2A plus 2. Now the first thing I'm going to do to get rid of these fractions, I'm going to multiply everything by 4. So that will get rid of the quarter on the left hand side. And when you times a, times a half by 4, you get 2. Okay, so we've multiplied 
by 4 on both sides there. Let's now expand the brackets of what we've got on the uh, on the uh, left right hand side 2ab plus 2b plus 4a plus 4. Okay we need to express a in terms of b so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move all of my a's onto the left hand side so I'm going to take away 2b from both sides, so 2ab from both sides, and I'm also going to take away 4a and move that onto the left hand side. So when you do 3ab, take away 2ab, you're left with a single ab, and then take away 4a, and you're left with 2b plus 4. The next step is to factorize out the b and the minus 4. Okay, and then the final thing to do would be to divide by the bracket, so it's going to be a equals 2b plus 4 over b minus 4. And there we are, that's our final answer here. We've found an expression for a in terms of b. So what did we have to do in this question? We had to use our formula to work out the area of both of the triangles. And then we had to identify that the area of triangle B is 3 times the area of triangle A. That means that this needs to be multiplied by 3 to give you this area. So it's 3 times the area of A equals area B. I then made things a lot more simple by timesing through by 4. That got rid of the quarter and it multiplied the half by 4 to give it a 2. Expand the brackets and then you've got this expression here. And now we're looking to make A the subject. And it's now turned into a problem of rearranging this formula to make A the subject. So A's all need to go on one side, then they need to be factorised, and then we divide by the bracket and we get our final answer. Lovely question, that one. OK, next question. Pause the video and have a get this one here. Okay, so in this question we're not given a diagram, so let's draw our own diagram. So in this question here we've got um, A and we've got, um, we've got, so we've got A to B is equal to 12, and then we've got A to C is equal to 14. Join these up together. And we know that the area of this triangle here is 72. So find in degrees the two possible values for the angle A, B, A, C. So B to A to C. So this angle here is what we're looking for in this question. So let's use our formula. Half A, B sine C is equal to the area. So it's going to be a half times 12 times 14 times sine of X equals the area of 72. So let's work out what this term is at the front. 0 0.5 times 12 times 14, that gives us 84. So it's 84 sine x equals 72. Divide by 84 on both sides. It might simplify, it doesn't matter if it does or not. And then we will find out x by doing sine inverse of 72 over 84. So sine inverse 72 over 84, that gives us 50, uh, to the nearest degree, that gives us 59 degrees. Uh, but in this question it says to find two possible angles for the angle BAC. Now let's just simplify 72 over 84 for my explanation. 72 over 84 is 6 sevenths. So what we're effectively doing here is we're looking for what angle on the sine graph gives us an output of 6 sevenths. So it needs to have an output of 6 over 7. So that's quite a high output. And the first angle that the calculator gave us was 59. Now remember, this is the shape of the um, sine graph. So there could be another value to this answer. It could be this angle that's way up here that's a different number to 59 but will still give us an output of 6 over 7. And what we're going to use here is we're going to use the symmetry of the sine graph here. I'm going to come up by 59 from the base here and I'm also going to come up from the base backwardly from 
180. So I'm going to do 180 take away 59 to get my second answer, which is 121 degrees. So these are my two answers. They are 121 and 59. Okay, moving on to the final question, pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, hopefully you've given this one a real good go. So what we need to go through here is all of the information that's in this text here. So the lengths from A to B and B to C are both X. So let's draw that on the diagram. And we know that uh, P is a point on E, sorry, on AF um, and Q is a point on CD such that the length from B to P and B to Q are both 10 centimeters. And we also know that angle ABC is 30 degrees. So that's just for this triangle ABC. Let's, let's connect those A, B and C together. And uh, maybe we might want to connect P and Q together as well. Um, okay, so, so yeah, so there we are. Um, okay, so what do we need to know from this question then? Well, we also know that uh, these are um, congruent parallelograms. Now, what that means is that this line here is parallel to this line here. So what that means is that the distance from A to C is equal to the distance from P to Q. Okay, well, how are we going to use this? Well, what I suggest we do is we draw our two different triangles out. We've got one triangle where we're told it's A to B to C, and it goes uh, X, X, 30. And we have a second triangle which goes from B to P to Q, where we're told this side of 10 and 10, and we don't know what the angle is up here. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to use the maths of the um, cosine rule and we're going to equate the length of the lines from P to Q and A to C because these two lines here are equal distant to each other. I know that they're equal distant to each other because the two lines C to D and A to F are parallel and parallel lines always have equidistant um, lines between them. Okay, and we know that these are isosceles triangles, so that, that makes the point even more. Okay, let's do the first one then. Let's do the triangle um, ABC. So we're working out the length down the bottom. So it's going to be um, A squared equals X squared plus X squared minus 2B times C. That's X squared again times by cos of 30. Uh, simplifying this is going to give us 2x squared minus 2x squared and cos 30. Cos 30 is root 3 over 2. Okay, so that's going to be root 3 over 2. I can cancel out on the second part of this, the over 2s and the times by 2. So I'm left with x squared minus root 3x squared. And I can factorise out the x squared here, root, so x squared, 2 minus root 3. Okay, now you can kind of see this is kind of forming now part of the answer. So it looks like we're halfway there. We've worked out the length from A to C. Now we need to do the length from A from P to Q. So it's going to be an angle that we don't know, but we know the two side lengths are 10. So it's going to be 10 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 10 times 10 times cos of the angle that we don't know, and in the question it's given it as just PBQ. So I'll continue that terminology, PBQ. Okay, let's tidy this up a little bit. So it's going to be A squared equals 100 plus 100, that's 200. Okay, that's where the 200 probably comes from. Minus 2 times 10 times 10, that's another 200, times by cos PBQ. Okay. So what we're now going to do is with this expression here and this expression down here is we're going to set the two things equal to each other. Reason being is that the line from A to C is equal to the line from P to Q. So because A to C is equal to P to Q, that tells me that x squared brackets 2 minus root 3 
is equal to 200 minus 200 um, cos PBQ. And now we've just got a rearranging thing on our hands. Now I've told you before that when you rearrange a formula and you want to make cos PBQ the subject, it's really annoying if it's a negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this expression onto the other side and I'm going to take the whole thing of this away onto the right hand side. So it turns into 200 cos PBQ. So I've added that onto the left and then equals 200, and then I'm going to take away the whole of this left-hand side onto the right-hand side, so subtract x squared 2 minus root 3. Then I'm going to divide by 200, Two hundred divided by 200 is 1, and 200 divided by this expression here, well the best thing I can do there is 2 minus root 3 over 200. And there we are, that's the answer to this question. So it's a little bit a little bit formatted different, but yeah, it's the same answer. So real tough questions, and that's why I've saved it till last. Um, in this question here, you had to make two isosceles triangles, do cosine rule on both of them, and then set the distances of them equal to each other, rearranging the formula to get you a subject of PBQ, and then there you are, that's your final answer. Lots of marks available for something like that. Okay, so hopefully you found the video useful. Um, please feel free to come back to this at a later point in time and try some more sine, cosine and area of triangle formulae. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching.